hope deferred. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled or when dreams come true, it's like a tree of life. Proverbs 13, 12. One day, the Holy Spirit illuminated Proverbs 13, 12 during a prayer time with a saintly woman in the course of a phone conversation. I was personally going through an increasingly difficult time spiritually, emotionally, and physically, though I hadn't voiced it to anyone. On this specific day, I'd simply ask for prayer for pain throughout the left side of my back. As this dear woman began to pray, she suddenly stopped in mid-sentence and said, Oh my, you're suffering from deferred hope. I thought, what is deferred hope? <laughs> Then calmly, yet with noticeable authority, she spoke directly to the problem. And she said, deferred hope, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break you off of my brother's life right now and order you not to return to him again. Instantly, I was delivered. The pain in my back left simultaneously. It was miraculous. The only way I can describe what occurred is to say that all the chronic pain in my back, neck, and shoulders that had been increasing in intensity for the previous six to eight months time snapped off me like a tightly stretched rubber band being cut with a knife. I was free. Then in the same gentle voice of authority, she said, I now replace these areas in your life with God's desire fulfilled, which the Bible says is a tree of life. When she spoke these words, my mind, which had been saturated with frustration and tormented with stress and chronic disappointment was suddenly purged by the inflooding mind of Christ my faith level spiked immediately. My spiritual vision was renewed like an eagle. Said another way, it was as if my viewpoint and understanding of my life and its seemingly arduous circumstances suddenly changed. It was as though God showed me heaven's perspective his aerial point of view, looking down on the same life issues and deferred or delayed hope I'd been struggling with. At the same time, my heart was filled with new anticipation and godly optimism of what the Lord was now about to do as well what he was about to do for me as well as through my life for others. In a word, hope was suddenly restored. As I stood amazed and praised God for this mighty deliverance, because this had actually been going on for three years. The entire time I was ministering, preaching, casting out devils, healing the sick, leading people to Christ, seeing miracles, yet I myself, there was this deeper web that was wrapping around me to where I almost couldn't breathe. But in that moment, God set me free. These forces of darkness that had encroached on me before the deliverance had been subtle. Somehow through my ignorance, they had increasingly hindered and oppressed my mind and my body and eventually began to vex my spirit, this thing called deferred hope. After hanging up the phone from this prayer encounter, the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me how subtle yet devastating hope deferred can be to a person. In reality, if it wasn't for the intervening hand of God, through that saintly woman, deferred hope could have easily prevailed against me, derailing me in my walk with the Lord. I could have become shipwrecked in my faith. 
as the Bible warns in 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 20. I became aware of how I had nearly become destroyed because of my ignorance regarding this overlooked biblical subject of deferred hope. You ready to go on the journey? This is why God's wisest Old Testament king admonishes, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart flows all the other issues of life. If hope deferred can make your heart sick, then all your decision making now becomes jaded, twisted, offbeat, off pace, polluted, diverted, and even perverted. The New Testament says, the Apostle Paul warning us, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices in 2 Corinthians 2.11. I believe it is a safe statement to say that the devil's ability to keep us defeated is directly related to his ability to keep us ignorant on spiritual matters. This is why today I'm sharing the keys to victory from the Lord against hope deferred. Amen? Amen. Okay. So hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. That's Proverbs 13, 12, the King James Version. Other translations read, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life, New International Version. And also the New Living Translation says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when dreams come true, there is life and joy. The three-phase strategy of hope deferred is this. Say three. three. Number one, life's very real circumstances that contradict the promises of God. Life's very real circumstances that are undeniable that contradict the promises of God. You look in your bank account, you are declaring prosperity, but you're possessions have not yet lined up with your confession. Those circumstances are real. They're not fake. When Job lost everything, those circumstances weren't fake. They were real. The sickness in your body, we don't deny the sickness. We deny the right for it to stay. But we acknowledge it and we supersede it with the truth. The facts are the sickness is there. The truth is by his stripes, we are healed. But I'm not healed yet. That's the first prong of the test of hope deferred. And the first hook now gets in. The second prong or the second hook of hope deferred is the negative mindset that develops that is contrary to the Word of God. On the first step, a stronghold starts in our mind. On the second step, the negative mindset starts to creep in that's contrary to the Word of God. No longer are we full of joy, peace, but now something else starts to come out of our mouth. Our confession's no longer that way. You know, the Bible says, O ye of little faith. The word little faith is not little as in small, but little meant enduring in that passage. Peter. Oh, ye of little faith, you walked on water. Told the disciples they had no faith. Peter had little faith. He had faith to get out of the boat and to walk, but it wasn't enduring faith. It was small endurance. So the first prong is life's very real circumstances that contradict the promises of God. A stronghold begins. The second phase is a negative mindset that develops that is contrary to the Word of God. And this results in anger, frustration, disillusionment, and hopelessness. And then the third prong comes in. 
Now with prong one and prong two, life circumstances that are not deniable, and the negative mindset that comes in, now the enemy says, now I can come in. And I can begin to speak in their ear. I can begin to oppress them. I can begin to sicken their hearts. And I will whisper in their ear, where is the promise of his coming? When that demon spirit comes in, the heart becomes sick, polluted, or bitter. And now it becomes a triple braided cord that's not easily broken. The ironic part about this is once we get to this third stage of bondage, we usually don't even realize we've been trapped and brought into captivity by the enemy of our souls. We begin to live as if this is our lot in life, but I can tell you it is not your lot in life. It is a stepping stone. One may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken, Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, and you and a prayer partner and the Jesus of the Bible will get you set free from real life circumstances, the well-meaning words of family and friends, and then that spiritual power that tries to attach itself to you. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, King James, New King James Version, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring in the issues of life. Our job is to keep our heart in the midst of these situations and God will deliver us. If we fail to guard our hearts, hope deferred can creep in and cause our hearts to become sick. And the other issues that spring forth in and through our life will likely become negatively affected, polluted, or even perverted. Let me give you some encouragement. King David was called to be king and was on the run from Saul for nine years. Joseph was called in the field, came back and told his dad about it. Yeah, you're going to bow down and your stars are going to, brothers are going to, no, that's not happening. Get back in the field. The brother sold him into slavery. He ends up in the pit, Potter's house, the prison house, and finally gets promoted to the palace as prime minister. 13 years in the crock pot. David reigned over Israel and Judah. 40 years. How long was Moses after he was called? In the wilderness? He had a 40 piece. That's right. But he's able to keep you from falling if you're slow cooked. But if you're microwaved, Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, that by following the prophecies that were given over you, you might fight the good fight, holding on to faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected these because of hope deferred. They didn't see the manifestation. They stopped believing the vision. Abraham, you will be the father of many nations, for I've made you the father of many nations. Years go by. The wife says, what about Hagar? Why don't you help God? My womb is dead. Hope deferred crept in on Abraham. Hope deferred crept in on his wife. And he sleeps with Hagar. Bloop. Ishmael, a work of the flesh, is born. Then Isaac comes, the child of promise, supernaturally by the Spirit. Who is the supernatural promises nemesis for the last 4,000 years? The children of Ishmael. What spirit caused that? Hope deferred. Lot's daughters with Lot are delivered out of Sodom and Gomorrah. They look back, their husbands were destroyed. Mom's gone, she wouldn't leave. They left their heart in Sodom and Gomorrah. 
I think that's a song. <laughs> what did they do? It's going to be years before we find husbands. Let's get dad drunk and sleep with him. Let's have incestuous relations conceive and give birth to Moab and Ammon. And the Moabites and the Ammonites were birthed through an incestuous union and drunkenness that resulted in two nations that stand against the people of God. Do you see what hope deferred does? It's diabolical, isn't it? The zealots during the time of Jesus took a stand against the wickedness and the oppression of Rome. And 30,000 Israelite zealots that stood against the government were crucified on crosses just like Jesus was during that era. They were waiting on the promise of his coming, but they said, if it is to be, it is up to me. And as a work of the flesh, they went and stood against authority God told them to submit to. What are you doing in the political environment? Are you a zealot? It sounds good, but are you sent? Or are you one who just went? Jesus comes on the scene. He submits to authority. He heals the sick. He casts out devils. The masses are following after him. And like a sheep that goes to the slaughter, he was hung up for our hang-ups. And when the resurrection came, the Holy Spirit came, and it's been birthed worldwide. Hope deferred cost the zealots their lives. But you and me cost Jesus his life that we might be born again. My son Timothy, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by following them you might fight the good fight, holding on to faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected these prophecies and so have shipped wrecked their faith. Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. The Apostle Paul handed somebody over to Satan that he might they might learn not to be blasphemers. Why? Because they were in the church, they heard the prophetic word, but they no longer believed it because hope deferred began to wrap around their minds. And Paul had to hand them over to Satan. Is this a serious subject? Yes. yes. How many messages have you heard on hope defer? When I wrote this and put it on the internet, somebody found it on page five in Taiwan. Contacted our ministry and invited me to go preach over there this message. Now it's starting to pop up, other people getting the revelation. Five examples of hope deferred, Abraham, Sarah the, with a wife, Joseph in the prison house, Moses, 40 years, the children of Israel, they also got a 40 piece. Now here's what's crazy about this. Moses is living in the lap of luxury for 40 years. He gets a call of God on his life, he goes on the back side of the mountain for 40 years gets the rod of God's authority in his hand, and he's given now the privilege of leading three million Israelites out of Egypt with the greatest healing service in the history of mankind, not one feeble one among them. They came out with mighty outstretched hand, and he now has the privilege of another 40 piece with some rebellious kids who want to stone him. Call to God isn't always what it looks like on social media. They were whipped and beaten with rods. 
they were stoned to death, having not fully received the promise in this life. Is that the message you hear on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights? You might hear the truth here. You know the great thing about a sugar-coated message is it tastes really good, but it leaves you empty. The great thing about a meaty message is you have enough protein to grow. Yeah. Five examples of God's servants who experienced the test of hope deferred with the children of Israel and these others. But I want to hear, share some statistics and then we're going to move in and we're going to close. Statistics. Divorce rate has increased by 300% in the last three, 30 years. In the last 30 years, the divorce rate has increased by 300% in this nation. 50% of first-time marriages end in divorce. 60% of remarriages end in divorce. There are currently 2.5 million divorces every year. The youth suicide rate has tripled in the last 35 years. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among young people in America. 25% of high school students seriously consider suicide every year. That's one fourth of them. Psychiatric admissions account for 25% of all hospital admissions. 63% of suicides of youth are raised in a fatherless home. 90% of homeless runaway children are the suicide victims. 85% of young people in prison are attributed to a fatherless home. 17 million adults have a depressive disorder in America. This represents 7% of the U.S. population. This disorder was the leading cause of disability in America last year, a depressive disorder. Hope deferred. Serious depression is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Makes your heart sick. It doesn't take a toll on your physical heart, but it takes a toll on your spiritual man first, and then it can affect your physical heart. A merry heart full of joy doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit who can bear. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Effects of hope deferred on pastors. You ready for this? Pray for your pastors. 70% of pastors said they regularly fight depression. 70%, 7 out of 10. Regularly. Is it true, Roger? 80% of children of pastors seek professional help for depression. You think that's normal? That it would be worse in the ministry where we know better than it is outside the ministry? Why would it be tougher inside the ministry when we know the truth and the truth has set us free because there's a spirit that targets you by the name of hope deferred that is throughout the scriptures but like leviathan he masks himself and he slithers around and his greatest tool is to make you think he doesn't exist 50% of pastors stated they would leave the ministry if they could, but they can't find another way to make a living. What if I told you about once a month on a Monday, I want to quit the ministry? You ready for this? Three weeks ago, I was going through a tough time. Finances were contracted in the ministry. Things weren't happening the way I thought they should. And I said to God, not in a humble petitioning voice, walking back, that's it, God. I'll just shut the whole thing down. Take all the websites, I'll take all the videos off. We'll stop all distribution on cable and satellite and radio and internet TV. I'm tired of it. What do you think of that? <laughs> no response. He's <laughs> trying to get a rise out of him. <laughs> you see how Hope Deferred will try to get you to abort your ministry? to abort your calling, to abort your faith for your family members to be saved because they're 
calling you wacko and Bible thumper. Oh, you got on the God Squad. Oh, you got weak. You need a crutch. I don't want that religion. God's not real. But just like you, they're going to get saved. If God can save you and me, he can save any who. Warning signs of deferred hope when we're closing. Diminished desire or energy to go forward. Loss of spiritual vision, purpose, or calling. Feelings of frustration, anger, depression, disillusionment, confusion, or despair. Hope deferred is the common cold for the soul. It hinders you from dreaming. It's time to get back up and dream again. Yeah. Hope deferred tries to keep you from fulfilling your God given dreams but no more six stages of hope deferred frustration confusion unbelief disillusionment cynicism and bitterness beware lest any root of bitterness lay hold spring up cause trouble and thereby many become defiled This is one thing that I've learned about hope deferred. You have to give your heart permission to hope again. We have to make a conscious decision for our hearts to hope again. Stand up. So the four RE's of deliverance are this. Recognize the issue. RE. Number two, repent, come out of agreement. Don't partner with hope deferred anymore. Don't come into agreement with it. Number three, renounce it. Call it what it is. It's a spirit that's tried to derail you in your faith, to cause you to get shipwrecked or to Ishmael or to do something that's not God's highest will for your life. And then after you've renounced it, when it tries to come back, resist it. So the four RE's of deliverance are recognize, Repent, renounce, and resist. Recognize, repent, renounce, and resist. And this four RE's will work in every area of your life. 